and I literally looked over, watched this dead man stroll by me, and thought nothing of it. Hey guys, welcome back to Nurse Catherine here. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Wednesday, which I never post videos on Wednesday, but I did not post a video yesterday because it was election day, of course, November 3rd. So I hope you all got out there and cast your vote. But um, first I wanna apologize for my hair right now. I have been looking at jobs tirelessly today and got off the phone with a recruiter for a job and uh, it wasn't what I wanted it to be so that was a little frustrating and now I've just been looking at jobs and houses and apartments for the last like two hours constantly doing this with my hair so that's why my hair is the way it looks. But to get to this actual video, I posted on Instagram today that I would be doing a reflection on my last year in the ER, a little over a year actually. I started the ER in 2019, August of 2019, and now we are in November of 2020. So I thought I'd reflect on what the ER has been like since I work in the busiest ER in Pennsylvania and the 10th busiest ER in the nation. Um, so I thought I would reflect on that and just kind of talk about what I've noticed about myself with burnout and some changes in my nursing care and changes in myself that I've seen throughout this last year. So that's what this video is about. So if you want to hear that, stay tuned. And other than that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video. But here we go. Okay, to start with some background first, I left med surge nursing because I was totally burnt out. So in July of 2019, I left bedside med surge nursing after three years, a little over three years, I think it was. And then I went on a medical missions trip to Nigeria for 15 days. And that was life changing. It was absolutely amazing. So I ended med surge nursing went on my trip, had about a month off until I started in the ER. So it gave me a nice break from nursing and just really helped me prepare to be in the ER and just get a fresh start because I was very, very burned out from bedside nursing on a med surge floor. So that's the background before getting into ER nursing. So then I started ER nursing and I was scared I was nervous, but I absolutely loved it all at the same time. And I still feel like that, minus the scared part. Some days are nerve wracking, but I still love my job. I still love bedside nursing, but there are things that I don't like about it at all. I should say bedside ER nursing because it's a way different type of bedside nursing. So looking back at this past year, I have definitely noticed the burnout is even more real than it was last year. And it's just, I don't know because of the virus, I'm not going to say the whole word because I don't want YouTube to put a banner on this video, but I don't know if it's because of the virus that has burned me out because that started what, January 31st, the shutdown of China started. So since that point, it has been the virus constantly, and I only started in August of 2019, so that only gave me a few months without the virus. Um, but prior to that was the flu, and the flu is always a rough time for ER nurses. It is really rough. So when I look back at last fall, we were seeing over 400 patients a day in the ER, and our capacity is not big enough to see 400 patients a day. It is, but it's, it's wait times were six hours, seven hours, eight hours sometimes. Some people were waiting two hours. It all depends on the acuity, but there were people I saw waiting in the waiting room for like eight hours, and then people were piled up on beds in the hallways, and it's just not safe. And that is something, now that I look back on ER nursing and reflect back on this year, is that you have to make it work, even though if it's not right, 
because there's nowhere to put anybody. Now looking back at my skills, before I get into the emotional side of this, looking back skill-wise, I have learned incredibly, or an incredible amount of knowledge. I've gained an incredible amount of knowledge being in the ER. Not that I didn't in med surge, but I've learned a lot more in the ER critically wise than I have in med surge. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm so thankful that I've had those opportunities to see really critical patients and not as critical patients, but to really hone down on some really critical nursing skills. That has been amazing. I am so happy that I've been able to do that. With that being said, let's get into the emotional side of this. I left med surge nursing because I felt like I was getting, like there was a disconnect between my patients and I. Like I wasn't as compassionate anymore. I just felt like I was doing the same thing over and over. You know, 9 a.m. meds, followed by getting all your assessments in by 11, followed by a lunch break, followed by let's do it all over again until five o'clock. Then those last two hours, oh, that's when we actually can maybe do something or maybe talk to our coworkers, uh, maybe actually spend time with your patients instead of rushing around. So the burnout was so real and I had that emotional disconnect between my patients and I, and I just felt like this is just another patient. This isn't a human being. That's literally how it felt. Now, that is how it's starting to feel with ER nursing. I feel like it's very task focused in the ER and I knew that going into it because it's very treat and street, get it fixed and send them upstairs or fix it and send them out so we can get the next person in. So it's very, very fast, but that emotional disconnect is still kind of there and I hate to, I hate to even admit this, but this is a story from last week. I watched a Lucas machine and I don't know if you guys know what that is. A Lucas machine is what our ambulance companies use, most of them around us, that straps the patient's wrist to this machine, okay, that is over top of them. So it's like this way, okay? And there's a big old, like, it's like a fist pumping on their chest. So their hands are up, this machine is pumping on their chest doing CPR. That's the cardiac part. So this machine is doing the compressions for the EMS workers while they get to do other things for this patient. And I literally, looked over, watched this dead man stroll by me and thought nothing of it. And that is how ER nursing can get. That is exactly how bedside nursing can get. And that's how nursing just can get in general. When you see bad things constantly and you're constantly seeing people dying, you're constantly seeing bad stuff happen, it doesn't even phase you anymore. And I know that's not everybody, but that's how it is a lot with the nurses that I talk with at my work. And you literally see this and it's like, okay, here comes another resuscitation. Here comes another this, here comes another trauma. And it, and it can phase you, I personally have never dealt with a pediatric trauma and I never want to. That would be totally different for me. But an adult trauma or adult cardiac resuscitation, that is, it's like another day almost. It's because you know people are constantly dying and I think that's what you also come to terms with with being an ER nurse and I also think faith has a lot to do that. Has a lot to do with that for me, that um, I know God puts us here on this earth. He knows us before we're even born and he knows when our last day will be here on this earth and he will know what happens to us after we die. And I find a lot of um, peace with that, with watching people die. <laughs> and it's so morbid sounding and I know it is, 
But now that I reflect back on this year, I realized how much more morbid I've gotten. And I don't like to admit that, but now that I reflect back, I've realized I actually have become a lot more morbid. And like, just hearing people joke about death in the ER, it's so frequent. And I honestly think that's a way how people deal with the emotions of seeing bad stuff every day. And let's just talk about the virus real quick because that's been the majority of my ER work life was the virus. I volunteered at one point to be in the virus only, the CV only, I'll say that, CV only area of the ER. And I spent months back there, constant months back there. I will say I've never seen an intubated CV patient of mine ever and I did months in the ER. I have seen one intubated CV patient and that's because they had a slew of other medical conditions. But I never saw the, the deaths that were always portrayed. I had another nursing friend who did a travel assignment and she was saying how she had like 15 patients die in a day. And I never saw that. But I totally believe her, I just have never seen that. So I think the virus hasn't had as much as an impact on me in that way with deaths, but it's still exhausting. And it's still exhausting to think about. And it's just like, I don't know, everyone's just totally over it. And just the different opinions you get from every which way um, and I don't even know why I'm going off on this track because this is a reflection back on my working, but you have to deal with a lot of crap <laughs> in the ER. And that's what I realized. I didn't realize how our managers can come and go, how supervisors can come and go in the ER, and how staff is constantly coming and going, and, and new people are coming, and people who've been there for a while are leaving because it's so just like, it just burns you out so fast and when you get resources taken away from you, like we did because of the virus, that when you have those resources plucked from you, you are just going on a half empty battery and you somehow figure out how to make that last a 12 hour shift and then you get home and you're exhausted and I realized that I have not been the wife I wanted to be this last year. I have not want, been the family member I wanted to be. I realized it's affected my mood. I've been irritable sometimes, which is totally not my mood. I'm normally always happy. And just being drained is what I've noticed this last year. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's weird to think about all of that and it's weird to think about that compassionate side of myself going away because that's why I went into nursing. I wanted to work with people. I wanted to help people. It's what I felt like my calling was from God. And I think it still is, but I don't think bedside nursing is what it is anymore. And that's my reflection on this last year. I don't even, <laughs> I feel like I could just continue on, but this video is already like 15 minutes long and it's just me ranting, but that's how bedside nursing can feel. That's how this last year has felt for me. It's been exhausting, but it's been really awesome too because I've seen really, really cool things. A month ago, I saw a patient being paced, externally being paced, like patches on and watch that and I've never seen that before, so it's super, high emotions of excitement, adrenaline, cause you're seeing new things and then you get those low lows and you're like, I've been a crap family member. I've been a crap wife. I have not been who I've wanted to be or who I know I am or who I know God wants me to be. So yeah, that is my 2020 nursing reflection. And I honestly am not sure what type of job I even want next. I literally, when I got off the phone today with the recruiter for the job I applied for down in Georgia, I was just like, oh, God, please just help me understand where I need to be next and what that looks like and 
just, I know I need to keep praying about it. And it's just exhausting to even think about and to think about trying to do 12 hour shifts again because I can't have a home life when I'm doing 12 hour shifts. It just does not work well for me. Um, and trying to find a nursing job in a different state where I've only been to once, it's, uh, it's a bit more exhausting. <laughs> But yes, okay guys, this is now 17 minutes long, so I will, I'll finish this video here now. Um, if you guys have felt the same way, please comment below. I know sharing stuff like this can help new grads out. I don't share this to discourage you from ER nursing. I just share this because if there are other of you out there, or if there are others of you out there that are feeling like this, you are not the only one because look at me, I'm a hot, mess and it's my second day off and I still like stressed about what I have to do next um, but only six more working days left thankfully and then I have a, a nice break over a month break so I'm definitely needing that <sighs> all right thanks for letting me rant guys for 18 minutes now I will <laughs> see you in Saturday's video and thanks for watching my 2020 reflection on ER nursing.